Hey there, I'm Scott Tellick, author of the Swithin series of Arthurian novels, which is the only book series to remain absolutely faithful to the real legend of King Arthur and his buds, just making sense for readers of today. Okay, so at this point you are asking me, Scott, why are there no good King Arthur movies? Or TV shows or series or anything? Why is everything King Arthur just so awful? You know, you can't blame people for thinking that King Arthur is stupid and boring or that King Arthur can't work on screen because all the stuff that's been made out of it is such garbage. When Monty Python and the Holy Grail is considered one of the best and most accurate depictions of the Arthurian legend, you kind of see where we are. But there's a few reasons why that is and we're going to talk about them. And the first is, it's simply too big. Now that's not just what she said, that's what I say. It's a real honest-to-God epic saga which takes place over 70 years and really there's no way to tell it as a complete story. I'm planning 25 novels to do my telling of the legend and I'm leaving some stuff out. The movie Excalibur is one of the few to try to tell the complete story and you just can't do that in two hours, which is why that movie gorgeous as it is, is a little bit of a mess story-wise. You really could only do movies of individual stories within it, but that way you'd miss out on the whole massive sweep of the thing, which is kind of the most amazing thing about it. The second reason is, it's too weird. The story as it is doesn't chop down neatly into little adventures with tidy endings, and the stuff that does happen can be quite, quite strange. Like for example, a knight might have to go to a fountain, and then when he gets to the fountain he has to pour a bucket of water on a stone, which causes a big storm to come up, and then a huge knight is there who kicks his ass. So it's not quite like we have to rescue the princess and blow up the Death Star. But this weirdness is what makes it amazing, and as I write my novels, I'm definitely trying to retain that sense of weirdness, where you have these things that don't make sense, but on a symbolic level, they kind of do. Which is also what's totally amazing about it. Another thing that makes it hard to adapt into a movie is, it just doesn't follow traditional story beats. The stories don't often come to neat, clean ending where good wins and evil loses, where they steal the thing or prevent the explosion or rescue the maiden or whatever. Sometimes they do, but for the most part it just leads into more adventures that all intertwine and get all messed up until you're more confused than anything. But that, again, is what's amazing about it. And I'll take a story in which I don't know the ending rather than some of these current things where you see where it's steadying from the first few seconds. Another thing is it just may not be that explosive for audiences of today. And this leads filmmakers to try to jack it up in ways that may lead to some unfortunate decisions. There's no armies of the undead, there's no white walkers, and there's very few dragons. The truth of the matter is that there are very few, almost no dragons in King Arthur, and when they are, they don't raise cities. There are giants, but they rarely go marauding. I hate to say, it's largely just about humanity, about human failings and ambitions, and I guess that can make it seem less exciting for a blockbuster movie. And because of this, the filmmakers who adapt King Arthur just don't trust the material to be enough as it is. That's kind of what I'm trying to do in my books, is just let it be what it is. But filmmakers don't trust it enough to be what it is, so they try to change it and make it more explosive. And in changing it, they usually ruin it. And that's why there's no good King Arthur movies. 